Hi, I want to talk about Mesos. Mesos. Let's go. Mesos is known worldwide. It is known to be highly contagious, which means people can contact it very easily and very fast. It is spread via coughing, sneezing, when you are close to the infected person and it could be by direct contact with the secretion in any form. The agent of this horrible viral infection is known as Boblivirus. Belongs to the family of Paramazoviridae and the incubation period is between 6 to 21 days mostly. The individual infected could be symptomatic during incubation period between 18 to 13 days averagely. The virus enters through the respiratory tract or congital. It divides locally but spreads to the lymphatic tissues and to bloodstream to other reticular and endothelial systems. How is it transmitted? Four days before the rash, whoever has contacted the virus could transmit it, even before seeing the rash. So, it is one thing to say, oh, I'm glad my daughter my son is free with you no know, bullet plane from amsterdam to california or from uh, london natural to montreal no one with rashes and so on and so forth well that might be self-satisfying sort of um it is possible someone who had harbored the virus could be spreading it four days before the rash. You have made your judgment based on the rash, that it could be that you have contracted the virus even before the rash appears on the individual that is already infected. Then, when the rash is already shown, the individual could still be spreading it. Four days after the rash has disappeared, transmission is still possible. So you can see this is a horrible disease, this is a horrible situation because if you judge by the rash, four days before seeing the rash, you could have contracted it. And if you've seen the rash and you're running away, what after the individual has been treated or the immunity has taken over and the rashes have disappeared four days after you could still get the infection. The mode of transmission is airborne in public places with or without contact with the affected person. So it's not even compulsory that the affected person must be in the same room with you the fact that the affected person has passed through this place, sat down on this couch, used this cup, this spoon, and you didn't even know anything, you are now there now, you grab everything, you are sitting in the same place, or you're touching the same mouse on the computer system, and so on and so forth, you could become infected. The rash will be in diff different forms. But before then, you're gonna have what is called prodromal stage. At this stage, which will be about one to two days before the rash is seen, there'll be cough. There'll be coriza, which is called common cold or cut in some places. There could be conjunctivitis. You see the eyeball, now you can recover, you check it, it's going to be inflamed, it's going to be red. And non-term, that is the buccal mucosa 
will have what they call corporate spot. And it's going to, if you open the mouth of the affected person, you check the molar region of the teeth, not the incisors or canis, not the premolars, the molar region. I'm going to find the corporate spot, it's going to be whitish. Some could call it oral choice, some could call it mink and all that, stain, the mouth or whatever, but it's coplic spot and that is pathognomonic. You're only going to find coplic spot at the molar region of the teeth, the mouth, as an enantiome, sending the signal that here is measles. And of course, with time there will be the squamation and if you do immunological tests that time, IgM for measles will be positive. That is all about prodromal stage. Three to four days after, there will be the onset of the symptoms. The rash will be erythematous and maculopapular. It will start at the airline and it's going to spread from the head region in a fashion that is called cervicalocorda, which means from head down to the toe, but in that order. It's not the rise that's going to appear just anywhere. It's going to appear on the face first, the neck, the, the chest, the limbs, and it's not going to affect the palms and soles. If you check the rashes, you could find some fatigue in severe cases and hemorrhagic forms. What are the possible investigations you are going to do when a child or even an adult comes down with measles? Mostly clinically diagnosed by mere taking the history and thorough physical examination because there's a pattern that the rash will take there's pattern of prodroma symptoms. We're going to check the conjunctiva, the coplic spots, and the way the rash is spreading. When you add all this together, the doctor might come to conclusion, probably with the history of immunization with MMR, that is measles, mumps, and rubella, or not, or there's history of affected person around, or there's an epidemic even pandemic in some cases, we all those and the physical examination is possible to give the diagnosis of measles. Well, with that, you can still do complete blood count and the white blood cell will decrease and particularly the T cells. And I'll talk more about T cells, which is cellular immunity later on. The platelets will be down, and that is why some will have a TK and hemorrhage. When nasal swab is taken for cytology, as possibility of giant cells in buccal epithelia, nasopharyngeal cells, conjunctiva, and bouncy samples of lymph nodes or urine could all give germ cells. types of measles. There is modified measles and non-protective immunity in some. By modified measles, the pre-existing measles immunity, which could be acquired through immunization or white type, will afford the affected individuals to have milder symptoms. And the incubation period in them will be longer that will span the period of 17 to 21 days and it will not be highly contagious. In other words, there's a good level of protection in them. They are not likely going to die you know, with this level. The non-protective immunity may occur and let me explain a bit before talking more about that. They have immunity, but it's not protective. So, something good, but not good enough. 
and we could find that in those who have anti-measles antibody vertically transmitted from their mom to them while in the womb. Why would it be under this situation? That could be cleared off between three to nine months. And that is why we don't usually immunize kids until after six months with measles vaccine in some parts of the world. But here's the problem. If you are still keeping to the tradition that no measles vaccine until six months, how about the possibility of it being cleared off after three months? So what will happen to that child if he or she is exposed after three months at four months, five months, and six months before you give that vaccine. So the child may come down with measles and probably die from. So we need to check the antibody titers in those cases. And some have, for one reason or the other, been given intravenous immunoglobulin. They have some level of immunity, but not against measles because it is cellular immunity that is more important here. Measles mom's rubella vaccination is good, some have it, but they don't have good titers after. So if the titer is lower than what is expected for cell protection, truly they've been vaccinated but they will not be adequately protected. And the prior history of protection will give a clue to how horrible it will be now. The treatment. First thing to do is isolation. But the doctor and nurses will explain to the uh, affected individual why he or she will be isolated simple to prevent the spread. Why? If your loved ones, your family members or friends are coming too close to you or anyone for that matter, the individual can become sick as well. And when everybody is sick, then who will be looking after you? Even the doctors and nurses that have not been immunized should take heavy precautions right now. So that the gown, the mask and gloves, and then vaccination also just like any other person who would have had contact with infected individuals or they will even be relieved and somebody else will take over their positions. Everybody will just have to protect you know, everybody that is not immunized in any way. So don't feel offended if you have been told that you will be in a secluded environment. Isolation is necessary. Then supportive treatment will involve antipyretics, IV fluids with or without antibodies. The antibodies will serve as prophylaxis against possible secondary bacterial infection. Vaccination of all non-immunized contacts within 72 hours is mandatory. I repeat, everyone who had had contact with this affected individual, but he or she is not immunized, must be vaccinated within 72 hours. IgG should be given within six days of exposure and all cases should be reported to the public health department. Prevention is still Mrs. Mons rubella vaccination. I don't want to go into the politics surrounding Mrs. Mons rubella vaccination around the globe. But for minor infection in future, immunization is necessary right now. Provilasis with antibiotics may prevent severe complications. And 
that is subject to the protocol at your center. Vitamin A is given in some places. I have personally administered that in the past to some sick kids with measles. So if the child is about six months old, 50,000 international units of vitamin A is fine. And between six months and 12 months old, 100,000 international units is good. And if it's older than that, then 200,000 international units. Some have even given rebarbering at 15 milligram per kilogram per hour per day in immunosuppressed individuals. The role of immunity. We have two types, the cellular and humoral. Both are important, but the cellular immunity is more important when it comes to measles. Cellular measles specific immunity is vital. While the keys that lack the cellular immunity like T cells deficiency conditions usually have severe hives. And not only that, they have higher mortality compared to those who lack humoral immunity. I think that is clear. Those who lack humoral immunity are not dying are like those who lack cellular immunity and T cells are mostly concerned here. Immunity after measles is no longer lifelong like we were taught in medical school. It's no longer lifelong. Measles can suppress immunity on its own. Imagine that. Leading to secondary bacterial infection. And that will lead to pneumonia or tuberculosis reactivation or subacute sclerosing pan, encephalitis, and so on. So, here is a big question. When I have not been immunized or I have refused to allow my kids or those under my watch to be immunized, and probably we are not feeding well to have good immunity in the system, and we contract measles virus, what are we expecting? Why? If there is no vaccination, no immunity, and no good diet, measles on its own will suppress the little immunity that is found in the system. Lo and behold, we are going to come down with severe cases and probably die from it. Recovery. Cough may persist for up to two weeks after measles. If fever is more than three days after, then it's already complicated with secondary bacterial infection. During the rashes, lymphadenopathy is possible with splenomegaly. It will clinically improve within 48 hours of rash appearance. Rashes darken out after deplamation. Complications. Secondary bacterial infections like acute otitis media, sinusitis, pneumonia, pan encephalitis or subacute sclerosis, pan encephalitis are all possible. Also possible here are myocarditis, pericarditis, thrombocytopenia, and Steven Johnson syndrome, which is going to be a very serious hypersensitivity reaction. So, the fact that this individual has measles, which is a viral infection, doesn't mean we are not going to come across serious issues here, and that's why most kids die. And by the time they have pericarditis, 
thrombocytopenia, myocarditis, pneumonia, you know, leading to respiratory distress and respiratory failure you know, with panencephalitis, the prognosis is horrible. In conclusion, be informed that records are changing as per measles eradication, immunity, and resurgency. So many countries have been labeled as measles free, but they need to check their records back. Measles eradication seems not to be the case now in many parts of the world. To those who thought that once affected by measles and you have recovered, then you have lifelong immunity, you better check it. It's no more. And resurgency in many parts of the world that have been declared measles free are now having new records. Approach your doctor once you have any prodroma signs immediately. Obey the public health officer's instructions because the government might issue some warnings, travel warnings, precautions, quarantine procedures, and so on and so forth. For the sake of yourself and the rest members of your family, your friends, your community, and the world at large, let's obey. Be immunized with Mrs. Mom's rubella. I don't want to go into the politics of what some people have against Mrs. Mom's rubella vaccine and the concern with autism is another topic for another day. But as far as measles is concerned, it's no longer the story we knew before. Eradication is no longer the label that some countries can claim now. Lifelong immunity is no longer what we can claim. And resurgency is now on the rise. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I'm going to make more on some of these worldwide known diseases very soon. Please subscribe to my channel so that you can get these publications immediately they are released.